You are watching Econom TV, the unofficial broadcaster of economics for South African students. In this episode, it's still about chapter 8 and the interaction of demand and supply. This is part 2 of 4. Let's start with an increase in supply. In this case, the whole supply curve moves towards the right. There is a decrease in the equilibrium price and an increase in the equilibrium quantity. The demand curve remains unchanged. If there is a decrease in supply, that means that the supply curve moves towards the left. There is an increase in the equilibrium price and a decrease in the equilibrium quantity when the demand curve remains unchanged. It's important to note that we refer to this as a change in supply. There is a decrease in the quantity supplied at every price, so the whole curve moves. The factors that can cause a change in the whole supply curve were explained in Chapter 7. This table provides a quick summary of some of the main factors involved. We can start with the joint and alternative products. Joint products are produced together, like meat and leather. So if the price of meat increases, the quantity supplied will increase. But at the same time, the joint product, in other words, the cow's hides or the leather, will increase as well and the whole supply curve will move towards the right. If the price of an alternative product decreases, this leads to an increase in supply. The example is for maize and sunflowers. If the price of maize decreases, the quantity supplied will also decrease. That means that there's more land available to also plant the alternative product, the sunflowers, and the whole supply of sunflowers will increase. The inputs or the factors of production can lead to an increase in supply. So if inputs are more affordable or the cost of the factors of production is lower, the whole supply curve moves towards the right. Finally, if there is an increase in productivity, that also causes the supply curve to move towards the right. Here are a few examples with graphs. If the price of inputs decreases as it does on the right hand side, that leads to an increase in the supply. The whole supply curve moves towards the right, the equilibrium price is lower and the equilibrium quantity is higher. If the price of inputs or the cost of the factors of production increases, then you have a leftward movement of the supply curve. It moves towards the left, less is being supplied at every price, and the equilibrium price is higher, while the equilibrium quantity is lower. A decrease in productivity will move the supply curve towards the left. That means that less is being supplied at every price, where an increase in productivity increases the supply. The whole curve moves towards the right. The equilibrium price is lower and the equilibrium quantity is higher. But what happens to the equilibrium price and quantity when there are simultaneous changes in demand and supply? It all depends on the relative size of the movements of demand and supply. Which one of them changes by a greater amount? And we can show that in the graphs that follow. Let's say that the increase in demand is similar in size to a decrease in supply that occurs simultaneously. The end result is that the equilibrium price ends up being higher because the increase in demand pushes up price, the decrease in supply pushes, pushes up price, but then because they are equally sized, the impact on the equilibrium quantity is zero. This stays the same while the price gets pushed up by the two forces working on the demand and supply side. It's possible that the increase in demand can be smaller than the decrease in supply. So here the relative decrease in supply is much greater than the increase in demand, which means that in both cases these two push up the equilibrium price. But in this case the equilibrium quantity at the equilibrium point E2 turns out to be smaller. It's also possible the other way around, where the increase in the demand is bigger than the decrease in the supply. In both cases, again, this pushes up the equilibrium price, but at the equilibrium E3, the equilibrium quantity has now increased a bit because the increase in the demand was proportionally bigger than the decrease in supply. 
So did we achieve the outcomes of this section of chapter 8? Can you explain how changes in supply influences the equilibrium price and quantity? And can you explain simultaneous changes in demand and supply and illustrate those with graphs? For more information, have a look at chapter 8 in Wurenfuri. There is additional information available on Efundi and you can answer the quiz questions. Finally, follow Atikunuam on Twitter.